was pretty tough on Lucid yesterday, but today I did a little bit more of a deep dive into the Aston Martin contract that was agreed upon by Lucid and obviously Aston Martin. I went down the I went down the rabbit hole, figured out the revenue, and I even went back to 2021 to find some things that Peter Rawlinson said that actually proved me wrong from yesterday's video. Again, I realized I was a little tough on Lucid yesterday. Um, I just did not agree with the way the company was managing the finances. But today it was made a little bit more clear why the company is doing what they're wanting to do. So let's go ahead and dive into it and I will share my thoughts about what I've learned. Trust me, you're going to want to say to the end of this video because I've learned some really interesting things. Kind of flipped flopping a little bit on what I said yesterday, but I'll explain as I go. So let's go ahead and dive into it. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing because I try my absolute best to try to provide the, the most value and the most honesty when it, when it comes to Lucid and what to expect and what's happening when it comes to the financials, news, and everything like that. So consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Okay, let's dive into what I learned. So this um, is going over the the deal that Lucid signed with Aston Martin. And here's why it's so important is because this is a licensing deal. So I'm going to get my little laser pointer here. And as you can see, it's promised that it's as soon as 2025, so it could be a little later then, um, as soon as 2025, Lucid will be paid $132 million for cash for its expertise. Basically, Aston Martin saying, okay, you guys kind of will be our, our consults. It'll be like a consultation kind of deal. Here's $132 million, okay? That's more than, let me fact check myself. I have some other stuff highlighted here. That consultation is almost more money than Lucid made last quarter. So, not a bad deal. $132 million for a consultation. Pretty cool. Okay. They're also going to be given a 3.7% 3, 3. stake uh, in Aston Martin worth another $100 million. Now, I guarantee this is going to come with some provisions like have a lock up here, like they can't just dump their shares. There's going to be some sort of vetting period, uh, vesting period in tranches. I, I don't know exactly how that's going to work. I'd be fascinated to. Maybe I can find that in, in the filing um, if they did file with the SEC on this. And then they were all, then Aston Martin said, hey, because of all this, because we're like going to be invested, you guys are going to be invested in us. We want to be invested in you. We're going to buy a quarter of a billion dollars worth of power trading components, two hundred twenty-five million. And if you add those up um, altogether, that's four hundred fifty-seven million dollars. Pretty good. That's actually a lot better than what I was thinking. Um, so I wasn't too sure about how the li licensing model was going to work with Lucid, but it, it's actually a lot more profitable than I imagined that it was going to be. Um, and I'm going to dive into the $25,000 car next because that's what I complained a lot about yesterday. I was like, why not do the $25,000 car? That's what most people want. Peter Rawlinson actually answers that question uh, as of June 20. This was a June something article. It wasn't, it's not too long ago. I think it was around the Aston Martin deal time. Um, so Rawlinson said, do we ever, uh, do we ever want to make a $25,000 car? Uh, because that's, what's going to change the world. I'm not sure if we want to be in that business, but licensing our tech to a company that could makes more sense. So basically, and so I was really confused. Let me let me go to the next part and then I'll kind of summarize this part. So I was really confused because I was like, I could have sworn Peter Ronson said that they were going to make a $25,000 car. Like I, I swore I heard him say that. And so here's what he said back in 2021. Um, the world needs a $25,000 $25, car urgently. Lucid can't do it for another eight years. This was in 2021. So uh, eight years is 2029, obviously. Um, adding that even Tesla has not launched such a model yet. Good point, Peter. Okay. He said he, uh, he also said six well-known automakers have reached out to him over the last month, expressed interest in Lucid Motors technology. Cooperating with another company could lead to making a $25,000 $25, car in the next three to four years. So I see what Peter Rawlinson's doing here. Basically, he's getting paid half a billion dollars. Lucid is being paid a half a billion dollars in different forms of compensation to help companies get to hopefully what will be a $25,000 car. And this is for a small 3.7% stake. But if there's a company, for example, hypothetically like GM's like, all right, we're going to get serious. We want to make a $25,000 car. Uh, Lucid, you have the best battery tech. Let's go ahead and, and strike a, an $8 billion deal. Boom. That's all of a sudden a game changer and Lucid's back in the game. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I, this was a very insightful study that I did. So that was very interesting. Now let's talk about what this means for Lucid's financials because words mean one thing. Financials are, are obviously what keeps the company alive and what and honestly, it's what the shareholders should be caring about because the shareholders are paying for all of this. Um, they're the ones getting diluted. They're the ones that are, uh, the Saudis are buying more shares. They're the ones that are feeling the pains of this. Um, in 2023, in, in that quarter, 149 million, right? So that deal, okay, so that's that's the quarter. Now it's like, okay, obviously that all that revenue from Aston Martin is not going to land in their bank account in one quarter. 
all right, well, to give you guys a little bit of um, a little bit more data to work with in 2022, the full year, whoops, I did not mean to erase that. Let's undo that. The full year of 2022, they made $608 million in pretty much straight vehicle revenue. Um, from what I understand, obviously it costs a lot more to get that, but straight vehicle revenue was around $608 million. Okay, now let's do this. Let's jump to 2025. We know for sure that they have the Aston Martin deal. I'm going to change this to blue. Actually, let's change it to green because it's actually revenue. Um, it's a good sign. So the Aston Martin deal is, is a minimum for, well, it's going to be around $457 million. I'm going to put an asterisk here because that stock is probably going to be restricted in some ways in shape, some shape way, or form, um, meaning they can't just all dump it and turn it into cash immediately. I'm not sure that they want to. I don't know. Depends on what position the company's in. But basically, they made $457 million just from licensing in 2025. Add in the auto sales, even add in the auto sales from 2022. Actually, let's just extrapolate 2023. Let's say this is the bottom of in terms of revenue. Um, so let me get my calculator out. Let's just say the revenue was 149, uh, 149 times four. We're just extrapolating this. We're not saying it's going to increase at all. Let's just say 2023 is the worst year the Lucid has. Um, let's say, so that comes out. If you multiply 149 times four, you get um, 596 million. Okay. Half a billion dollars. So even once you couple... 457 million plus, I'm going to add that, um, 457 million plus this 596, what you get is you get 1 billion, oh, oh undo, whoops, you're going to get 1 billion and 1 billion, 53 million dollars, 1 billion, 1 billion, one billion fifty three million dollars. I think that's how I say it. I'm saying that wrong. Sorry. I'm super confused right now on that how to say that. But yeah, you get one billion dollars essentially um in revenue. Obviously the cost of revenue is gonna be a lot higher, but licensing should bring that cost of revenue down quite a bit. So very interesting to see that this is an interesting strategy. And I see what Peter Rollinson is saying when he says that he's not sure. I see what Peter Ronson means when he says he's not sure that they're going to be the ones that make the $25,000 car anytime soon. That could be eight, nine years down the road. That's fine. But they want to build the technology that could build a $25,000 car. So this contract right here, very interesting with Aston Martin. It's a lot more valuable than I initially gave it credit for. That's my fault. But that's why I'm here is to continue to learn and provide all the good news I learned and all the bad news I learned. So if you guys can deal with the bad news I learned, I will share the good news that I learned. Promise I don't have any puts. I don't own any shares of Lucid. But I do feel like I owe a, I owe a responsibility to to this community to give as much information as transparently as possible. So honestly, um, 2025, 2024, maybe even I might look at opening up. If, if this can, if this, if these contracts continue to trend in the right direction, it'll be interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Maybe I'll open a position who knows, but we're definitely going to be paying attention a lot closer to lucid, especially if we see more and more of these licensing agreements. If you couple that with auto sales, all of a sudden they're starting to generate a little bit of revenue. Okay. Um, this is the sort of path to pro profitability that I was looking for for Lucid. Honestly, I feel like I've provided more <laughs> transparency financially with Lucid's financials than Lucid has provided <laughs> because they're not the ones like providing this roadmap to path to profitability. That's what shareholders deserve. Shareholders need to figure out how is the company going to make money, not only make money, but how is Lucid going to become profitable? So I know they had to lay off 20% of their workforce, obviously super sad, um, but it's a sign that Lucid is maturing into a company that's wanting to make a profit and, and survive. Um, these are tough economic times, uh, both uh, macroeconomically as well as geopolitically. And these, if, if you can make it out of this, there's never going to be perfect conditions, right? There's never a perfect macro, never perfect um, e economy. There's always things going to be going on. But if Lucid can make it out and they can keep going through this high interest rate environment, they may prove to actually be a, a good EV player in this, in this area and help these luxury um, car makers make some make some money in the ev world and they can profit basically 100 million dollars just for consulting them so super interesting i thought you guys would find this insightful if you guys did find it insightful consider leaving me a comment also hitting subscribe i appreciate it i think it replied to almost all the comments from yesterday so I'm trying to be a lot better at that and it is super hot in my room so i think this is where we're going to end it but i appreciate you guys' support and i'm trying my absolute best out here so i appreciate your patience and like always see you next time thanks for watching